First Baptist Church. Hope everybody is well. Hope everybody is uh, staying safe and healthy through all this uh, madness that is going on. And uh, we hope that this message finds you well today. Uh, glad to be here this morning, being able to bring this to you again from uh, Clear Branch Baptist Church, uh, our Facebook Live. This is, seems to be getting to be more the norm now. Not that I'm any more comfortable doing it, but it seems to be uh, getting to be more the norm. Can't wait till we get to fill our churches back up and uh, see all of your smiling faces and hope that, really and truthfully, I hope this platform brings forth some new people. Uh, we hope and pray that everybody that's been watching that maybe hadn't, uh, doesn't have a church to attend or uh, maybe look for a church that will come and visit with us whenever we get to come back together and, and find out what we're all about. Uh, I tell people all the time, you know, that uh, if we can't do anything else well, we can love well. And that's what I like to talk about this morning is love grown cold. As I was looking through the Word of God this week and praying about what God would have for us to speak about in just a little while, uh, I was reading through uh, the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and it was talking about the disciples when they'd asked Jesus about the end of times. They said, what will the signs be? And Jesus was giving them uh, some uh, pointers about what was going to happen, uh, some things to look for. One of the things that stood out to me more than any uh, of the others uh, was the 12th verse of the 24th chapter. And it said, because of the, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, I've thought a lot about that. I've, I've looked at our world situation that uh, we seem to be in anymore. And man, if there was ever a, a sign that pointed to uh, that the Lord will be coming home soon, it's that uh, the love of many has waxed cold. Uh, I've never seen a time when people are so at each other. They, uh, they, they can't disagree and, and walk away just agreeing to disagree more. It's a fight about everything. Everything seems to be uh, a, a struggle or a fight or it, it seems to be something that, uh, you know, that, that nobody can, can find a common middle ground. I remember back when I was a kid, I love saying that because every time I say that, it kind of tells about the gray hairs that I have in my head. It's back when I was a kid. Uh, we, uh, at that time, I can remember uh, Ronald Reagan was my favorite president. And maybe you're out there about ready to turn off right now because you're a staunch Democrat. But before you do, uh, I must remind you that even in the days of, of uh, Ronald Reagan, when the Democrats and the Republicans would fight so badly, uh, I would remember that oftentimes they would disagree heatedly about something, but then for the good of our country, they would put their differences aside uh, for the good of our country. I wish today that our politicians could take a lesson from those folks back then is that, you know, it's not about them, it's about our country, it's about the people in it. Uh, I wish our world could figure that out. That it's not about our uh, about what you want. It's not about what benefits you the most, but it's about what benefits those around you. It would be great today if the love of many didn't wax cold. But the Bible says, because of iniquity, because of sin abounding in our lives, the love of many wax cold. That we can see that in relationships. We can see that in relationships between husbands and wives. We can see it in relationships between parents and children. We can see it in relationships between co-workers or those who interact daily. Uh, used to it would be a, a time when people would look to the betterment of each other, but uh, in this day and time, it's like we're all about ourselves. We uh, oftentimes uh, look more to ourselves, and uh, it's not a boring concept in the Word of God. It happened time and time again uh, throughout the Word of God, how that men and women would look more to themselves than they would to the things that they should have. Uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, how that uh, we read in the book of Luke, how that there was a Samaritan there, uh, somebody that was considered less than a dog, how that he was the one that came to the aid of the one that was uh, beaten and left for dead, how there was good religious people, how there were scribes and teachers that uh, should have stopped and helped him would, would come by and look at him, look at that man that had been robbed and beaten and laid there, and they would look at him, and then they would pass on by, probably say, oh, what a shame it is. But how there was a man there, a Samaritan man that came by and in the Jewish tradition at that time. Uh, these Samaritan people were considered less than dogs and how that, that this Samaritan man uh, came by and how that he looked on and said that as soon as he saw the state of the they took him up and he bound him up and he put him on his donkey and he led him down to the inn and he, and he, and he took him in there and he said, listen, he said, here's what I will do. 
He said, I'll, I'll pay for whatever care it takes. And if I owe you anything, I'll come back and pay more. Just please take care of this man. Would it not be good today if God's people, if the people who uh, identify themselves as Christians today, would have that kind of compassion one upon another? I believe that because of our love for the world, that our love for each other has waxed cold. Uh, the book of John, 1 John tells us about this. Uh, I was reading about that in the book of 1 John, the second chapter. It says in the, first, in the second chapter, in the 15th verse, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The love. The love of the world has taken place of our love for God. As I was studying about that this week, and uh, the word world, uh, it comes from the Greek word cosmos. As I was looking at this, and, and I was trying to get my mind around the love of the world, it, it talks about that, that how that the world, uh, in this context, which comes from the Greek word cosmos, of how that uh, in the Bible, when you tie all of this together, how it, the, how it declares as Satan, is the prince of this world. How that he blinds the minds and the eyes of those around him. Oh, that God's people, those that identify themselves as Christians today, uh, will come back to the place where uh, we love God more than we love anything else. I know that we pay at lip service and we know how to say the words, we know how to sing the songs, we know how to pray the right prayers. But from deep down inside, I, I would to God today that God's people would find within themselves a, a rekindled fire uh, for their love for God. Because when we find ourselves with a love for God, we'll find ourselves with a love for one another. You see, it says here that the pride of the eyes and the lust of the eyes and the, and the pride of the flesh uh, and the pride of life, how it will take us over. Uh, we see things that we want and, and we become consumed by those things. We'll get to the place where we see something and, and it consumes our mind and our thoughts. We want to master our own life and we want to be the, the ruler of our own world, so to speak. And we'll do anything that it takes to get there. Oh, when we get to the place where we would humble ourselves before God and say, God, you are our God. That you are the creator of our life. God, we turn ourselves to you. You see, love has grown cold in many places today because we have let uh, the lust of the flesh take over. Uh, our love has grown cold today because we have let pride take over. Uh, our love has grown cold today because we have uh, made it more about our world than living in God's world. And I tell you today, uh, we should be all about living uh, for the Lord today. I know that sounds uh, so simple to say. Uh, I know it sounds so fright. And I know many people will say, well, he's just on another rant about uh, loving God more than he loved anything else. But the Bible tells me uh, that in, from the very beginning when God gave us the Ten Commandments, uh, they said that we will have no other gods before him, that we'll put nothing in front of him, that there should be nothing in him that means more to us than God. So what we should do today, amen, is put God back where he belongs, and that is first and foremost in our hearts. We should rekindle a fire, a love affair with our love for God today. We should get a place where we, our love is passionate for God. How many of us today can honestly say uh, that we pray a passionate prayer to God each day? How many of us can say today uh, that we uh, get on our knees and humble ourselves before God and say, God, uh, you take my life and make it what you have it be. God, it's not about me, and it's not about what I want. It's not about what I think, but God, it's all about your will in my life. God, I want to serve you with my whole heart. God, I want to make sure, amen, that at the end of my days, that there is no mistake that I loved you with all of my heart. I've often said to my children and my wife that one day uh, when I pass out of this world, amen, I would love, amen, for them to be able to stand around a casket somewhere as people may pass by, whether it be just a few or many. I would love for them to be able to know and hear the words that they knew, amen, that this man loved the Lord. 
I don't care if they say he was a good man. I don't care if they say that, that he was a, a good preacher or not. I don't care if they say he was a good pastor. But oh, what I would love to leave is a testimony that that man loved the Lord. I would hope and pray that the life that I live, amen, would tell folks that there's a passion for God in my life. And I hope and pray today that as you live your life, that the testimony that you leave uh, one day will be that you had a passion for God in your heart. Amen. How we do that, amen, is to turn away from the world and how it influences us and to ask God to be the God of our life today. I think so many times we have let uh, the passions of the flesh and the, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, amen, uh, take over our world. How many of us today, amen, if it offends our pride just a little bit, how many of us today are, are willing to fight over an offense to our pride? Amen, I want you to know something today, uh, that we don't have anything in this world, amen, to be proud of. We don't have anything in this world, amen, to stand and crow about. Because I'm going to tell you something today. All blessings, amen, and all good things come from God. It's nothing that we done. It's nothing that we can accomplish. Amen. I'll tell you what, uh, there have been many times I've looked over my life and I realized today how good God has been to me. I couldn't make it on my own. There have been so many twists and turns in the road that I can't explain other than to say that God guided me through those times and through His guidance, amen, He has blessed me in those times. Uh, twist and turns that I could have never mapped out that God has been in control of. I want to give glory to God today for those twists and turns. And I want to give glory to God today uh, for the guidance of His life. Amen. I believe so many times our love has grown cold today uh, because we have uh, let other things infiltrate. Amen. Our, our TVs and our, 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 our media and all those things today, they, they tell us that our values are old-fashioned. Uh, they tell us that our, our way of life is outdated. They tell us that it's not relevant anymore. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it be, it's a good thing, amen, if God's people sometimes, and I know, amen, this may hurt somebody out there. It'd be good today if God's people would just turn off the TV TV every now and again. Amen. And go outside. Amen. And just look up and thank God for what He's done. Amen. I was looking this week on the news and oh how sin is rampant in our life. There was people and actors and actresses all over the world. Amen. They was talking about how they were quarantined and not with their family but shacked up with somebody else and how they were uh, living a sinful lifestyle and not only living it but they were proud of it. Amen. God's people will stand and wag their head and say oh that's a shame. They shouldn't do that. But the next time they come on your television and sit on your favorite show, uh, you'll lap it up. Amen. And it's time that God's people uh, found a voice about themselves and say, you know what? We're not going to tolerate this in our life anymore. We're not going to tolerate this kind of behavior. I'm not going to watch something, amen, that promotes, amen, the things that are ungodly anymore. And it's time that God's people, amen, get back to what is right in the Word of God. And that is living for God today. Now, I know that probably sounds about as old-fashioned as can be. I don't think there's anything wrong today with being old-fashioned. I don't think there's anything wrong today with getting back to a godly base. Amen. I think sometimes God's people have outgrown the raisin. That's what my mom used to tell me. Sometimes we get just a little bit too big for our britches. Amen. When I was a little boy and, and I'd get just a little bit too cocky and I'd get just a little bit too smart mouth. My mama would tell me, son, you get just a little bit too big for your britches. And then she'd trim me down to size. Amen. I sometimes wonder if God ain't trying to trim us down to size just a little bit. If he ain't telling us that we got just a little bit too big for our britches. Amen. I know that's an old-fashioned statement, but I believe it's true today that God's people have gotten too big for the riches. Amen. We've made it more about a show than we've made it about God. We've made it more about a production uh, than we have made it about worship. Oh, that we would get back to the place today. Amen. Where we would just come into the house of God or come into the presence of God wherever we're at. Amen. With just a heart full of worship. Just hitting our knees humbly and saying, God, I just want to thank you for what you've done. I just want to thank you for what you've done in my life. And I want to thank you for the God that you are. Amen. The book of James tells us uh, today that if we will resist Satan, amen, that he will flee from us. That if we will humble ourselves, amen, that God and submit ourselves to God and resist the devil, that he will flee from us. Amen. We find this in the book of James, the fourth chapter. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Listen to this verse. It says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Oh, let me 
tell you something. I love that verse. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Amen. I believe if ever there was a time that God's people, amen, need to get close to the Father, now is the time. Amen. We'll sit back passively and hope and pray that the President uh, can fix our problems. We sit back passively and hope and pray that Congress can fix our problems. We sit back passively and hope and pray that the governor or some world leader can fix our problems. When in reality, amen, we need to get our knees, amen, and actively seek God and draw nigh to Him, amen, and watch what happens when God draws nigh to you. Amen. So many people today living in fear and anguish because of the things going on in this world. Let me tell you something. I ain't going to tell you that it don't cause me a little bit of stress because of the change in daily life. But I will tell you this. Amen. I'm not scared about what's going on. The reason I'm not scared is because, you know what, I realize that my God is in control. I don't have to sit back and worry about things. I don't have to worry about how the end of time is going to come. I don't have to worry about whether it's going to be a coronavirus or an asteroid hitting the world. I don't have to worry about uh, cancer or heart attack because I realize, amen, that when it comes my time, and praise the Lord, amen, my time will come one day, that when it comes my time, that I realize that my heavenly Father will be there, amen, to guide me into glory land. Well, praise God today. If that don't warm your heart as a Christian, amen, I don't know what will. It says the Bible tells me, amen, that the love of many has grown cold because of sin in your life, amen. If the thought of God taking your hand on your last day, amen, and lead you into glory, don't warm your heart, amen. I believe, amen, that your heart has grown so cold, praise God, that it needs to be fired up again. Amen. I know maybe you're out there and you're looking at this video this morning and saying, well, uh, hey, he seems like one of them old-fashioned preachers. I am an old-fashioned preacher. I'll just be honest with you. I grew up around old-fashioned people, and I don't think there's a thing in the world wrong with it. I'll be honest with you today. I praise God for what he's done. I praise God for the life he's given me. I praise God for the church he's allowed me to pastor. I praise God for the people he's put in it. Amen. I want you to know something today. We are a blessed people, and we are a blessed nation. We are a blessed church, and I'm a blessed person. And I want you to know I'm not ashamed, amen, to tell you about the hope that I have in Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to tell you today that I serve a risen Savior, amen. I don't command a risen Savior. I don't tell my Savior, amen. I don't command him as a butler or a servant. But praise God, I serve him, amen. And I'm proud to be a servant of God today. I'm proud to know today that my God, amen, is in control. I'm proud today to call Jesus my King. And I'm proud today, amen, to be able to say that he saved my old wretched soul, amen. I'm glad today that God still saves old sinners. Uh, maybe you're out there today and maybe you say, Brother Randy, I, I would love to have that. I would love to have Jesus in my heart. I would love to draw close to God. How do I do that? There's got to be some kind of special formula. There's got to be some kind of uh, a big prayer that you got to recite. There is no big prayer to recite. There is no special formula for it. All you got to do is humble yourself before God and say, God, I want you to be the God of my life. Amen. Don't you know it's that simple today? Uh, people make it out to be something complicated. They make it out to be something that uh, that is mystical in nature. I want you to know it's not a mystical thing, amen. It's a God thing. Amen. You get on your knees somewhere. You bow your head and you pray, God, I'm ready to give my life to you. Lord, I'm ready for you to be the Lord of my life. And I'm ready for you to be the King of my life. Lord, I just want you to be my God. And I want to be your people today. Oh, if we would just do that today, let me tell you something. The Bible tells me here in the book of James that if we will draw nigh to God, that he will draw nigh to us. Today, your relationship with the Lord is only as close as you want it to be. The Bible tells me it's about us now. It's about our parts. You see, God will not force himself on you. God will not force himself into your life. God will not force his way into your heart and say, well, I'm going to set up the kingdom here. Oh, no, you see, God stands at the door and knocks. And he says, if you'll let me in, I will come into you. So see, now the ball's in your court this morning. Maybe your love has grown cold. Maybe you don't love like you once did. Maybe your family is torn all apart by the ravages of sin and the things of this world. But let me tell you something right here in the book of James, he told us. He said that if we will resist the devil and we will draw nigh to God, that Satan will flee from us. 
Amen. Let me tell you something today. Let me tell you something. That if you're drawn out of the God today, it's a life-changing event. It's a life-changing thing. So today as we come to this place of the nation, we'll come to a close. I'd just like to encourage you this morning. Somewhere today, find your place with God. Humble yourself before Him. Say, God, I'm ready for you to be the God of my life. And I'm ready for you to take control. God, I don't want to be afraid anymore. I don't want to run scared anymore. God, I don't want to be cold anymore. God, I want to be in love with you. And I want to have a passion for you. God, and I want that passion to show those around me. God, I want you to make a difference in me. And in relation, you'll make a difference to my family. You'll make a difference to those around me. God, I need you to be in my life today. You'll be surprised the response you get, I believe. I believe you'll be surprised at what God does for you at that point. Amen. As we come to this place, I would like to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And I would like to say this. We invite you to come back and be in Bible study with us on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. And, and one day, hopefully, before long, we'll get to be back together. Hopefully, as the restrictions ease, where we're going to be meeting together. So uh, this week with the leadership of the church, so we can discuss a plan uh, for when all this gets lifted, so that we might be able to come back and worship together. And hopefully we'll be able to broadcast that plan before long. But for now, God is using this platform in a mighty way. He's reaching people that might normally not get to hear us this way. And I hope and pray His Word has found its place in your heart. So as we bow our heads and we pray this morning, I hope and pray that you will uh, just bow your head along with me and that you'll ask God to kindle the fire in your heart as we pray. Lord, I just want to thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I want to thank you, dear Lord, for first of all, being our Savior. I thank you, Lord, for being our King. Lord, I want to thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for loving us, dear Heavenly Father, to come in, Lord, and living in our side of our heart, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that as people have heard this message this morning, Lord, I don't know, dear Heavenly Father, how they respond. Lord, that's between you and them. Lord, that's one of the great things about this. Lord, I can't look into people's eyes, dear Heavenly Father, and see the response. Lord, but you can. Lord, you can look into their heart this morning. And you see where they're living. You can see, dear Heavenly Father, the relationship with you. And Lord, I know you're right there just waiting, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, it's not like you want to push them away, Lord, for things they've done. Lord, matter of fact, Lord, you want to draw them closer to you. The Bible tells me here, dear Heavenly Father, that you said that if we would draw close to you, Lord, that you would draw close to us. Lord, so I pray that as, as people all around this land this morning, Lord, that have heard this message, Lord, I pray that as they listen to this message, that they find the place, dear Heavenly Father, where they call on your name. And I say, Lord, I want to be close. Lord, I want you to come into my heart. Lord, I want you to show yourself in my life in a more powerful way, Lord. And I want that passion for you. Lord, that's what I pray this morning, Heavenly Father. I pray you use this message, Lord. I pray, Lord, you touch all of our hearts today, Heavenly Father. Each and every one of us, dear Lord. I pray that you touch our hearts. Rekindle a passion for you. And Lord, I pray to Heavenly Father in return, Lord, we can change all those around us, Heavenly Father. Every forest fire starts with spark. And Lord, I pray this is our spark this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And thank you for what you will do. And thank you for what you are doing. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we ask these favors. Amen. This time, this concludes our message for the Lord. It's like to take this opportunity one more time to say that I love you and I hope that all is well. And I pray that this about you will. Until next time, it's Clear Branch Baptist Church.